We're at North High School's Acuity Fieldhouse where tonight the Golden Raiders take on Green Bay Preble with a chance to clinch the East Division title. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, a big game tonight. Very big game, 14 and two. Sheboygan North has a chance to clinch the uh, conference title, at least on their division side, as Schwabin and Bayport are fighting on the other side. I don't exactly know who's going to be the conference champion if we get ties and different things like that, but the number one thing, and you know, when you set your goals at the beginning of the year is, we want to be the division champ, and that's what North has a chance to do tonight. Let's talk a little bit about tonight's game. Now, last night, North had a pretty easy game. They won by over 20 points. Uh, Preble, on the flip side, they won a four-point game at Manitowoc and had to play really hard. Does that have an impact on tonight's ball game? Well, I, I think it does. Both teams, you know, play real tough games or it's different situations like that. To me, I'm if I'm Sheboygan North, I'm a little bit scared. Last game against Preble was 61-57 12 months ago. They got beat by 20 points in this gym. It's like I remember that night when we did that game. It was just it like was we, a bummer. Yeah, and we were just in shock. I never thought a team could come into the field house and, and play the way they did. And I think Preble's a scary team. I know they're nine and seven, but it's one of those teams where, you know, I was, I hate to say this, but I think they kind of are underachieving a little bit. They're very gifted and talented, and uh, they know that they can win in this gym, and, you know, I think North's going to have their hands full. Well, that win last year certainly should help their confidence tonight, but uh, they do have a good player uh, in Christian Larson. Uh, he leads the team in scoring, and uh, if you talk to Coach Desitel about him, he loves the kid. Yeah, and, and Paul Giesler, too. Both kids are averaging 13 points a game, and uh, these guys are pretty good. Andrew Stone, too. They got some kids that can knock down some three-pointers. And, you know, like I said, this is a team I'd be very concerned about or worried about. One thing for Sheboygan North, they've just been outstanding with that 1-3-1, one, one, and hopefully that will carry over tonight. One thing that's really helped North this year, in close games especially, has been their free throw shooting. I think they were 26 for 29 last night. Last week when we were here and they played Preble, they were 21 out of 24. Yeah, we've talked about it all year, Marty. One thing that Sheboygan North does is they get to the basket. Their first thing or their first key is let's drive to the basket. Teams seem to collapse, and that sets up the three-point shooting, which they've also done very well at. But when they do drive to the basket, they do a very good job of drawing fouls. And that just builds up through the game, and it seems like most of the games we have, they're always getting into the bonus a lot earlier than our opponents, which leads to getting to the free throw line. And like you said, they're a very good free throw shooting team. We're not trying to jinx you, boys. But uh, you've done a very nice job the last few years. It doesn't matter who's, who steps up there, any one of those guys, doesn't matter if it's Eirich or Schwer or Kellner or Free, they all seem to have ice in their veins and knocking those free throws home. You mentioned a couple of good scores for uh, Green Bay Preble. North has uh, very good in, in terms of their balance. They've got three guys in double figures and Eirich is uh, pretty close to being in double figures scoring. Yeah, they have a lot of bounds. Congratulations to TJ Kellner. I believe he got his thousand point last night. He's leading the way with 18 points a game, but you know, you're right. You got, you know, Free and Conway's just having an outstanding year. You know, last year Alex was buried on the bench somewhere. Worked so hard this year, you know, and we've seen him just go off and have some big games. Tommy Irick's filling the role this year. I mean, what this team is is. Uh, just a complete team, you know, we don't have a bunch of studs or all-stars or first-team all-staters, but as a unit, they very they work so well together. Well, one of the things, too, you have the three seniors that were on the varsity as sophomores, and uh, let's face it, they're comfortable with one another. But I want to talk about one more thing, Chris, before we sign off. We're going to have to make this quick. It seems like Nolan Free is not scoring as much as he was earlier in the year. Yeah, I think what he's doing is distributing during the ball. He does get to the to the basket and gets, you know, creates those three pointers later. But I think Nolan just accepts his role as, you know, that key guy. You know, he's got to set up everybody else. And one thing he does do is he's so good on defense with his hands. I don't think there's a quicker guy with his hands in the conference. He gets so many steals. And you know, he doesn't get the points, but there's those little things that he does, you know, like I said, that fits fits this team well. I mean, they are just rolling right now. I, I think we talked what they got 11, 12 in a roll. Um, I think it's one of Coach Desitel's best teams coaching-wise. He may have had better talented teams, but they really work well. All right, with the alumni band in the background, we're going to step out and we come back. We'll have the tip-off and the starting lineups for tonight's game.
the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. I sure hope so. Do more than hope. Since the 1970s, global warming has caused ice in the Antarctic to melt and populations of Adelie penguins have been rapidly declining ever since. There's still time to make a difference before the Adelie penguin vanishes along with its habitat. Go to defenders.org slash global warming to learn more. Why is it you two have so much trouble communicating? I don't like the way he talks to me. All I said was that you had a big osteo fight. <laughs> well, what about the secrets you kept from me? Oh, so I didn't tell you about my drug allergies. Big that deal. That could have been nasty. How's your shoulder coming, anyway? Fine. I worked up to three-pound dumbbells yesterday. Oh. Just three weeks after surgery. That's pretty good. Communication is the best medicine. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sheboygan North High and Cutie Fieldhouse. Tonight's game features the Green Bay Preble Hornets versus your Sheboygan North High Running Raiders. The starting lineup for Green Bay Preble. All right, Six. they're going to announce the uh, starting lineups for uh, both teams, and starting with Green Bay Preble, they'll be starting number 13, Wally Vandenbush. He's a 6'1 senior. Also starting is number 23, Michael Weaver. He's a 5'11 senior. Number 25 is Christian Larson. He's a 6'1 senior. We mentioned him. He's a good one. Number 45 is Jacob Punzel. He's a 6'6 senior. And rounding out the starting five is number 51, Paul Geisler. He's a 6'3 junior. For the Golden Raiders, they'll be going with their uh, normal starting five. Leading them off will be 6'1 uh, junior guard, Nolan Free, number 11. Number 15, Alex Conway. Alex has had a great senior season so far. He's a 6'1 guard. Number 25, Tim Schwer is a 6'2 senior. Also having a great season. Leading the Raiders this year is TJ Kellner. He's a 6'4 senior. And the big man in the middle. Number 51, Tom Eirich. He goes 6'4. There and Don doing the announcing tonight. Yeah, Bill Horse not here. By the way, Conway is averaging about 14 points a game. Eric is at 8.6. Nolan Free averaging 12.7 points per game. TJ Kellner a whopping 18.5. In conference, it's uh, 19.6. And then Tim Schwer averaging 11.6 uh, points per game on the season. Alumni band did a heck of a job, Chris. Our referees today are, uh, there you see Paul, Brian Gallagher in his fourth year at uh, Preble. Our officials tonight are Steve Kleinfeld doing the tossing and our old buddy from Manitowoc, Keith Bondi. And we're off and running. Larson gets it in the middle. And they fan it out for a three-point shot. Weaver not able to come away with the rebound, but Kellner did. Early man-to-man -man defense for Preble. <laughs> Stole my thunder right there, Chris. You're right, man-to-man -man defense. Kellner had an open look, but couldn't get it down. Preble comes away with it. 
Still think this is a very scary game tonight for North. They got to really think about what happened 12 months ago. And the close game they had up at Green Bay Preble. Well, disagreement by the officials on uh, who the ball is going to go to, and they're going to say that uh, Alex Conway tipped it last and give it to Preble. Good inside feed to uh, Geisler who scores. Geisler. It's one of their leading scores at 13 a clip. Free hard to the basket gets fouled. He'll be shooting a pair. You know I always like it when uh, the North players do as we say in the opening. You know go to the basket drive and, and there's no one right it. away. <laughs> Took him a minute but he got, uh, you know he got my message. <laughs> It, it makes us seem like we know what we're talking about. <laughs> free knocks home the first free throw. We're at the 6.50 mark. It's 2-1. to one. Preble on top. Make it 2-2. Two to two. North in that 1-3-1. One, one. I was watching the JV game. Uh, and they've been playing a lot of 1-3-1 one, one also, Chris. wonder if that's going to be more of a staple in the uh Well, the freshmen program. are doing it too. I was watching the freshmen do it. Larson with a three-pointer. Uh, that's the guy you mentioned in that opening, Marty's. 13 points a game for him as well. The co-leading score. They only have three guys in double figures. Stone is the other one, averaging just about 11. Schwerer's layup attempt spins out. 5-2. to two. Preble on top. See how their legs are, Marty. I think that's very important. They, both teams did play yesterday. I know there was a blowout but uh, for North, but uh, still North runs a very uh, you know, tough system, but uh, they're in very good shape. Schwerer trying to dish it off to uh, Eirich, but uh, hit the underside of the rim. You know, just watching, Marty, they both seem a little like slow, a little sluggish. You know, they're not as quick up the floor. I'll tell you, one thing that'll tire you out, especially if you're playing that oh, nice move by Weaver inside. Good spin move. Quick timeout by Coach Desatel. It's not like the intensity of the North defense at early on here. 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. Uh, you're right, Chris. Uh, both teams seem somewhat sluggish, but I was going to say my point was going to be before uh, Weaver made that nice move inside is that if you keep moving the ball around on that 1-3-1, one, one, the defense is going to get tired from working hard. Sheboygan North leads the uh, division. Sheboygan South in second. It's nice to see the two Sheboygan teams at the top of the Division. The uh, dance team is at state tonight, so there's no halftime entertainment. So Chris is uh, Chris Lenz and Chris Wright are going to do a little interview on the uh, trainers' table at halftime. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. That could be real entertaining, right, Chris? We'll see. Uh, learn a little bit about what the trainer does here. And good time out by Coach Desatel as uh, his players respond with a three-pointer. Good skip pass, tipped away by Conway, Schwer weaving and got it. Nice driving layup by Tim Schwer. Oh man, that was a dandy. Now we've seen North the last couple weeks play. Tied at seven, another steal by North. I'll make a comment about that in a minute here. Oops, I was just gonna say Marty, uh, one thing the team seemed to have had trouble with North is in the first or second quarter. They seem to be turning the ball over a lot. And here, Preble's already got three turnovers in the first three minutes. Seems teams get to figure it out later on, but by that time, they're always down 10, 12, 14 points, and they can't make a run. North holds on to win. Skip pass to Larson, but uh, Free gets out there to cover him. Kellner not able to come away with the rebound. Geisler did, and he kicks it out. In and out by the shooter, Wally Vandenbush, and then we get a whistle and a foul. It's gonna go on Giesler. Fouls on number 51, Paul Giesler. 
First personal on him at 7-7 at the 419 mark of the first quarter. Mike Martin along with Chris Wright bringing you the ball game. We're running this game live. A lot of inside passing, but eventually it gets popped out to Tim Schwer and he's hot. He has seven points on the night. Seven of the nine Raider points are for Tim Schwer. He's got all th three buckets in a row. Weaver can get the other way for the charge. Good job of, by uh, Conway to get in position to draw that. Alex Conway doing the job. There you see the replay. Yeah, good job, Scott. Scott Mieloff, our uh, director tonight. Brian Andrews on the floor camera and Eric Wiesman on the top camera. Well, since that timeout, Marty, the Raiders have run off seven in a row. Coach Desatel's timeout. A little runner by Kellner, and he kisses it off the glass. Made that look easy. No kidding. 11 to seven, North on top. 3.30 remaining in the first quarter. Larson. I'd like to see Giesler all the way from the basket, stolen away. Oh, good bounce pass by Free, good fake. Before the shot though. Yeah, they're gonna, Larson's down, he's hurt. He took a bad tumble there. Yeah, trying to walk it off. Hopefully he'll be okay, there you see it again. Ooh. Oh, right over the top. Yeah. When you sign up for the basketball program, that's one of the things you don't plan on. No. Well, good job of fighting through the screen by uh, Kyle Swigum. Prevent the Conway three attempt. He's hot. Oh, Schwer again. His second three of the quarter. 14 to seven, North doubling up Preble. It's one thing Tim has been is uh, picks his moments. Another turnover. Conway almost. almost couldn't come up with it. Tim's been one of those guys real quiet, real quiet, and then he has just outstanding quarters. And uh, he's showing that again tonight. He has 12 points. It's 14 to seven, North on top. He averages 11-6, uh, so he's at it already. Giesler looked like he got away with a walk, but uh, Eric made him pay. Six turnovers. Conway open for just a second, but couldn't get it in. Ball almost knocked away. Yeah, free with the live hands. Slipping in the ball game without us knowing it was uh, number 41, Danny Tyker. He's a big boy. Yep. I'll have an extra helping of mashed potatoes, please. Tim Schwer picks up the foul, his first. There you see Danny, number 41. Shot no good, free, taking it right away from Larson and kicked down to Tim Schwer, but he has to pull it out. Nolan! It was seven to two, wasn't it? It was, it's 17 to seven. Free, it's been the free Schwer show, except for a basket by Kellner. Nolan has five points. Weaver, good pump fake. He knocks home a three. Coach Tessatel takes a timeout down seven to two. North runs out 15 straight and Coach Gallagher doesn't call a timeout. Very interesting situation, I think. When are you gonna stop the run? Well, Conway's pass was tipped away and stolen. Tyker, overlay. Just take your basket, son. Went for the foul, instead came away with nothing. You know, Nolan Free might have a hard time driving in like he normally does. Weaver's pretty quick on stopping those, uh, those drives. Larson, shot. Tim Schwer not doing a good job of blocking out that time after the three-point attempt. A good rebound by uh, TJ Kellner, however. It's 17 to 10, North on top. We're under a minute left. 
and uh, Coach Desatel indicates take one shot, down to 36 seconds. And North spreading the floor. You know who's not in uniform tonight is Andrew Stone. I don't see him out there, Marty. Oh man, that's a loss for those guys. Down to 20 seconds. Why not? He takes it right down Main Street and dumps it in. Tim Schwer again. Thought that was a poor set of defense there. 19 to 10, Larson's three point attempt at the buzzer is no good after one quarter of play. There you see it, North on top, 19 to 10. Hey, how do I get in on a government auction? You know, like for a car? Well, what about renewing my driver's license? Don't bring your government questions to just anyone. Go to firstgov.gov, the official source of federal, state, and local government information. And don't everybody chime in at once. I joined the National Guard and never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GoGuard.com. Tonight, uh, Preble defeated North 62-52. to And in the freshman game, the Preble freshman also won that game. By three. Yeah, it was very close. They came into this gym undefeated. And... Uh, their only loss was to an undefeated Bayport team, I believe. He's talking to Matt Baines. So a couple of close losses. North JV's had it down to 52-50 before uh, Preble ran off a 10-2 run to finish the game. First half shooting for North. That's the guy. After one quarter of play, Tim Schwerer had 14 points, Free had five, TJ Kellner had a two-pointer, Weaver had five for them, Larson a three-point basket, and Giesler opened the game with a two-pointer. North now seven for 12, and another turnover, that's number seven. Shot attempt by Nolan Free is no good, but he is fouled, he'll go to the line to shoot a pair. North seven of 12 from the floor, Preble just four of 12, they led seven to two, Marty, and since then, it's been the Tim Schwer uh, show. He had five in a row before he missed that one. I don't know why he missed that one. It was such an easy one. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to make them all? I think they're going to get Wally Vandenbush on the foul. That's what they're checking at the table. For Wally, that's his first. It's the fourth, fifth team foul. Actually, Vandenbush, that's his second foul. Brad Parent and uh, Paul Giesler back in the ball. Well, Giesler's back in the game. Parent's making his first appearance. And Nolan knocks home a couple more. It's 21 to 10. North with an excellent start. Larson, 17-footer, bango. They've been pretty cold, Marty. Yes, they have. There's no one to the rack. Oh, shot bounces off a little too hard. Tyker with the rebound. Fade away by Danny Tyker is good. I would have let him shoot that one, though. Back to the basket. 21-14, North on top. North working the perimeter. Tommy Olsen in the game for the Raiders. Nice kick out. T.O. 
Ole can't get it to go, but North controls the rebound. TJ Kellner with the left hand puts it in. 23-14. Kellner now with uh, four points. Comes the big man. Dan Stockdale in the ball game for uh, North. Tyker comes out. And uh, Jacob Punzel, number 45, is in for a Preble. Going down to 545 remaining in the first half. North up by nine. Shot is up and good. A three-pointer by Parent. Got to keep an eye on those boys. You nail that one in the opening too, Chris. Saying how they like to uh, shoot the three. Stockdale put a basket on a nice pass. The 6'9 senior. Nowhere to go. Give Parent on a spin hook puts it in. You know, what are you going to do on that, Marty? <laughs> Just uh, wonder why he wasn't starting. <laughs> That's what you're going to do. That's just good D. Little run, oh, Stockdale on a nice try, but couldn't get it in on a pick and roll play. Giesler faked the three. I want to walk. Yeah, oh no. They're calling a foul, not a walk, Chris. Giesler with the basket, and he'll have a free throw opportunity. There you see it. Guess the bump was right before. We'll give him that one. It was a nice move in any case. Foul goes on Stockdale. Giesler finishes off the three-point play. It's now 25-22. Trouble right back in it. Yeah, they're making a little run themselves. But you know, all year it seems. Oh, nice back cut by Free and Kellner front finds him for the easy layup. Every time teams seem to make runs at North, they always seem to counter, and there was one right there. You're right, Marty, a beautiful backdoor cut. Oh, good steal by Schwer. Taking it to the rack. Can't get it, we're gonna goaltending. Stockdale had his hand over the, over the rim. That used to happen to me all the time in high school, too. <laughs> Here you're going to see it. Nice Makes a good move to the basket. We're going to have to ten, send Tim to school. Mike Martin, school of left-handed layups. Shot that with the right hand. Eirich coming in for Stockdale. Nice couple of minutes by T.O. and Dan there. Four minutes left in the first half. North on top, 27-22. Larson. Cat control. And a reach-in foul. Who are they going to get on North? That one right there, number 11. Nolan Free. You got it, coach. For Nolan, that's his first. It's only the third team foul on North. Preble has five team fouls. Shot, no good, and the rebound by Free right over, well I shouldn't say over, but he was right in front of Giesler. Eirik from outside the line, rare three attempt by him. That was uh, Preble's first miss of the second quarter, Marty. Wow. Weaver on a nice step through move, but couldn't get it in. See if I keep mentioning it, maybe they'll keep missing. Conway, oh, can't get it in. And off the hands of T.J. Kellner, Preble will have it. North hitting a oh, bit of gonna, a cold spot. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Tommy Eirich. You know, I thought that was a good call, but it wasn't called at first. You know, I mean, uh -huh. I saw the, the foul yeah, yeah. there. 
Okay. But they didn't call it right away. Well, as it is, it's a fall on Tom Eyrick. Let's see if you can see it in there. Whoa. That was, <laughs> was there a fall? <laughs> I didn't see anything. What are you looking at, coach? It's all right, Tom. In the ball game for North is Matt Clark, number 44. He has the face mask on. We're not sure why that is, but uh, he does. Intimidation. Larson lost the ball again. See, they saw Matt right there. Weaver with a good interception of a Conway pass, and then uh, Alex commits the foul. Well, we have a break here, Marty. Uh, just uh, best wishes to Susie Runnis, who's uh, yeah, recuperating. A, yeah, from appendix. Kim Hutz yesterday led the uh, Lady Raiders to a victory against Green Bay East, but uh, again, uh, hope Susie will be back on the floor maybe soon. Coaching. Larson with a 12-footer, rattles it in. Gotta get a hand up. That was too easy. 27-24. Almost thrown away. Good hands by uh, Conway. Good feed to Clark. And then he's fouled. He'll go to the line shooting a pair. It's nice to see Clark and Stockdale getting those easy opportunities under the basket. Instead of relying on your outside jump shooting game, just another facet to the North uh, offense. 2.14 remaining in the first half. Well, it's starting to fill up a little bit, Chris. Yeah, good student section now. I was a little worried we weren't going to come anybody out. You should come and support this team. It's a nice team. It's a really nice team, if you ask me. Yeah, <laughs> 14 and 2. Clark with a 1 for 2 trip makes it 28 24. 210 remaining. Here's a little press. We saw this last week, too. Finish off the second quarter. North came out in the press. He's taking a lot of steps. Kiesler dumped it inside to a Punzel and he put it in. 28-26 North on top by only two. Punzel a 6-6 senior. 130, 140 left, 140. Nice back door, no weak side help. And Conway's fouled. Foul's gonna go on Christian Larson. I'll tell you, North is coming out with different stuff every week and no matter what they do, it always seems to work. It's not the three point play from the three point line, it's the uh, driving to the basket. Now they're just burning you on back door cuts. 31-26 North on top. That was Larson's second foul. No fouls here. Rebels in the bonus. Timeout called by Coach Brian Gallagher. It's a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Uh, you're right, Chris. You know, we haven't seen a whole lot of the back door uh, cuts from North, but uh, they're running it to perfection tonight. Well, they're just taking away the three-point shot. So they kind of overplay, and with that overplay, you kind of ball fake it out there, and then you just backdoor cut. We've seen Conway do that tonight. We've seen Free do that. You see Nathan. Callahan's and the Bells there. They're St. Dominic's people. They're coming to see their St. Dominic's graduates. There you see that uh, backdoor cut we were talking about. Jerry Drykos and another St. Dominic's parent. Conway, Schwer, Kellner, all St. Dominic's, and Irick. Long lead feed down to uh, Punzel, but he was not able to get control of it, and it goes out of bounds. North will have it. 123 remaining in the first half. It's 31 26. Kind of like that. You take a timeout and within, throw two, it away. <laughs> within two seconds. <laughs> what did I just tell you? <laughs> Now you make a five-point game into a seven-point game. As we're we want to finish off strong here. That's what he's telling them, and then just like that. OK, 
Kellner lost it out of bounds, and I think they're going to say it hit off of a Preble player, Wally Vandenbush. I'll tell you, it looked like it might have knocked off of uh, Eirich, but uh, Keith Bondi didn't see it that way. North retains possession. Rolling down to a minute remaining. North on top, 31-26. Lean in by free is no good. The ball is knocked away and Preble comes away with it. Good effort there by Eric. Just couldn't grab it. Larson with a pull up. Jay on the break. Knocks it in. I think they'll have a discussion about that here at uh, halftime. Got to find where Christian Larson is. Well, Schwer was on him. But I'll tell you, Larson got his shoulders in front of him and uh, kind of had uh, Tim Schwer at bay at that point in terms of a defensive player. 45.2 seconds remaining, it's 31-28. See if they run her down for one shot. Would appear to be the case, that's what they did back in the first quarter. We're down to uh, 20 seconds. Schwer in the lane, bangs it home. Big first quarter, first basket of the second. Eight, Larson, bangle. Oh, he's tough. Two, one, at the buzzer. Free, couldn't get it in. We're at halftime, North is on top, 33 to 30. Now stay tuned. We're going to have an interview with uh, Chris Lenz, the trainer here at North, but uh, that'll be after a couple of commercial messages. How far would you go to protect the planet? I want you to build an ark. Here we go. Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow! Oh! Maybe there's another way. People, the flood is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Moving is so much of who we are. It's easy to take it for granted. Multiple sclerosis stops people from moving. We exist to make sure it doesn't. Join the movement, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society at nationalmssociety.org. We go to any extreme to protect our children here. And here, And here. Well, there's a great way to protect our kids here against diseases like cancer, heart disease, and obesity. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, vegetarian foods. Now you can protect your kids from the inside out. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Welcome back, everybody. I'm with Chris Lenzieth. Leg trainer here at North, and by the way, nice blue shirt. <laughs> just exactly how long you've been at uh, North, and uh, just what is your job description here? Well, like you said, I am the athletic trainer here at North. Um, this is my fourth year here at North. Actually, it's the first job I ever had out of school, so uh, my fourth year here, loving every minute of it, and I uh, look forward to a long time here at North. Uh, what programs do you work with here? Well, winter right now is the busiest season. I work with uh, both J boys and girls basketball, JV and varsity, as well as wrestling, hockey, and gymnastics. Um, and then it's basically football and the soccer programs in the other seasons. All right. Um, what is uh, your most rewarding thing about working with the students here at North High School? 
Well, the re most rewarding thing is actually, in general, working with the kids. They're all great. Um, I have great opportunity to work with every single one of the kids. They all like to work hard. Um, but really, the most rewarding thing is seeing a kid that gets injured and then he kind of works hard. He or she works their tail off in the training room and the rehab sessions, and they get back out there just as strong as they were before, ready to play and help their teams. Well, I do go by the training facility, and I always see a bunch of people in there. Maybe it's your personality, not just your, uh, your work. Well, that would be fine with me, but I hope that it has something to do with the work that I'm able to do with the kids. <laughs> For young people out there, if they're interested in becoming a trainer, just what kind of schooling or training did you go through? Or if they like to become a trainer, what do they have to do? Well, to be an athletic trainer, the, the most important thing you have to do is minimally you have to have a bachelor's degree. So I got my bachelor's degree at UW-Whitewater. And then I went on to get my master's degree at uh, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. So if you're interested, I mean, it's a great field. It's really growing. There's a lot of opportunities for you out there. Get involved with your school's athletic trainer, job shadow. Take a lot of different science and math courses as best you can. Really ask as many questions as you can just to prepare yourself to be ready. Now, you've had some students here work with you here, kind of high school students. Yep. Uh, how's that been? It's been really great. I mean, I've had three or four really great kids that have been really interested in the field. Some of them, after working with me, decided that that's not what they want to do, but that's that's what it's best now. Better to find out in high school when you're in college. But uh, I'm always looking for more kids that are able to help and learn the field, and it's really been a great opportunity for me to work with those kids. Now, not a lot of people may know this, but you do other things here at North as well. I do. Um, in the spring, since it's a little bit slower for me, I'm able to help out as an assistant coach for the varsity softball team, which is just a real passion of mine, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, and just recently, I became a co-advisor of the student council here at North. And that, another opportunity for me to work with the different kids at different aspects of the school, and I've really enjoyed my time and my ability to do that. One last question for you. One thing I see with you, too, is you don't only have a good relationship with you know students, but you seem to blend in very well with parents and coaches too so it's it's not just a training job but there's other nice things about it too yeah it's it's real important I mean you have to build relationships with not only the parents and the coaches as well as the athletes but doctors and everybody around the community and if you're able to do that people are be able to respect you and they'll trust you and they'll basically they'll feel more comfortable dealing with you as a as an individual and that's and I feel something that's really I've been blessed with to be able to have such good relationships with not only the athletes and coaches but the parents as well. Yeah, it's nice that you know. It's not, I always say that too. Coaching's real nice, and coaching the students is nice. But it's nice to say you become lifelong friends as well. And you know, I see you interact with parents and things, and and that's got to be real nice. It's not they don't think of you just as a trainer, but as a friend. Yeah, it's something that I I'm really looking forward to, and I really enjoy the that opportunity outside the school to kind of be a part of the community as well. All right, well, thanks so much, Chris. We'll let you go back and uh, maybe clean up some bloody noses or something. With that, we'll uh, be back with the second half in a couple of minutes. What makes something amazing? Is it doing what people once believed impossible? Or is amazing something you become? We believe in doing the amazing, in dominating air, space, and cyberspace, inventing technologies, in doing the unimaginable. But our most amazing accomplishment isn't what we've done, it's who we've become. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. I wanted to do something to become more energy efficient. To protect the environment. To protect the future. So I turned to Energy Star for help. Energy Star is helping me be part of the solution. Everyone can join the fight against global warming. Go to energystar.gov to learn what you can do. Together. Together. Together, we can all make a difference. Well, you work for the feds, right? Can I find a slightly used hatchback at one of those government auctions? Something roomy but practical. With a sunroof? With a sunroof. You know. USA.gov is your official source for government info. From student loans to government auctions, USA.gov. It's government made easy.
We're back at halftime. There's about 2.20 remaining in the half. I'll go through the scoring for the first half. First for the visiting Preble Hornets. They were led by Christian Larson who had 11 points. Following him with five points each were uh, Brad Parent, Mike Weaver, and Paul Giesler. Uh, Danny Tyker had a basket and uh, Jacob Punzel had a basket for their 30 points. For North, they were led by Tim Schwerer, who had 14 points, 12 of those coming in the first quarter. Following him was Nolan Free with nine. TJ Kellner had a uh, quiet first half with only four. Kevin Conway, Alex Conway, pardon me, had a three point play for his three points. Stockdale had a basket, and Matt Clark made uh, one of two free throws for his only point to account for the 33 for North. They did have, at one point in the first quarter, a 17-7 lead, finished the quarter 19-10 on top, and then in the second quarter, Preble made a comeback, and they closed to uh, within 27-24, 28-26, and uh, got it as close as two points before uh, the half ended with North on top, 33-30. Chris is uh, adding up the uh, stats that he keeps track of. In the first half, North hit six out of seven free throws. They had three three-point baskets, all of those coming in the first quarter. Preble had uh, made their only free throw attempt, and they also had three three-point baskets. Uh, one by Weaver, Larson, and Parent. North's three-pointers were made by uh, Schwer had two, and Free had one. Okay, Chris. Well, I just got some shooting stats for you, Marty. 12 of 25 shooting for Sheboygan North. They really cooled off. They were 7-11 in the first quarter, 5 of 14 in the second quarter, 4 of 12 for Preble in the first quarter, 8 of 11. So they're just over uh, 50% Green Bay Preble, that is. They hit 3 of 7 from three-point line. They have 10 turnovers, which is way too many. And again, North doing a very good job taking care of the basketball. They only have three of those turnovers. Tim Schwer had that exciting first quarter. He was uh, held to just one basket in the second uh, quarter, but again, the turnovers were a major factor for Preble. Uh, they could, special thank they you could to get the on track. Do you have a breakdown of uh, when the free throws occurred? Because uh, it seemed like Preble had a lot of trouble in the first quarter, but seemed to bounce back a little better in the second quarter. Much better job of taking care of the ball, and uh, they're gonna start with it here in the third, trailing only by three. Uh, I saw Coach Desatel uh, just a minute ago on your screen. His, uh, he is going for win number 510 on his career. Three point attempt is no good, but Giesler puts the put back up and in, and it's 33-32. There's that backdoor cut. Good adjustments made by Preble at halftime. Now let's see if the three-point game goes. Conway nails a three, his first three-point basket. <laughs> Just like North, you take away the uh, backdoor cut, you run them off a of screen and bango from uh, downtown for three. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. Giesler trying to go baseline, but good defense by Tom Eirich, and then we get a whistle, and I think they're gonna get TJ. Nope, it's gonna be number 51. Tom Eirich, and that's his second. Larson tossing it in for the Hornets. Wally Vandenbush took that inbounds pass and Preble's in their offense. Oh, wide open from the corner was Jacob Punzel and he nails it. That keeps shooting well, Marty. 36-34. Three-point attempt by Conway is no good. And Punzel comes away with the board. He's oh. just one of four out there. Well, Larson nailed another two-pointer, but uh, just before the shot got called for the carry. Well, he likes that 15 to 17 foot range, Chris. Well, he can nail them down regularly. Backdoor cut, jump shot by Schwer is no good. He's cooled off since that 12 point first quarter. Yeah, he's six of 10 of shooting now. Punzel, either to able to gather it in, he puts in another basket. 36-36. Punzel has eight point, six points. 
Eirich, spin move, can't get the shot to go, but he does draw the foul. Well, Chris, our worst fears are being realized. Preble is playing well, and they've tied it up. I don't know, something about this gym for them. Take away that turnover by Larson, they would be, uh, after he made that shot, they'd be uh, winning. Tom Eirich breaks the uh, tie, knocks home a couple of free throws. 38-36. Vandenbush kicks it over to Giesler. Wow. He knocks home a two-pointer. Boy, they're hot. Four of five to start the quarter in the first three minutes and a bad turnover by North. Very rare. Like I said, they pretty much know where everybody's gonna be on the floor. 5.55 remaining in the third quarter. It's all knotted at 38. Preble shooting very well so far here in the third. 16 of 28 in the game, four of five, and there's a turnover by Preble. Well, good scramble defense by North. Forcing that turnover. Is that about number 12 now? Well, uh, how about number 12? Right on, Marty. Memory like a steel trap, nothing gets in, <laughs> nothing gets out. Long shot by uh, Nolan is no good. He's just two of seven tonight. Weaver's pass inside to Punzel is picked off by Kellner. Back-to-back -back chances for Preble to take the lead, back-to-back -back turnovers. Kellner's three-point attempt is no good and North has gone cold. They weren't shooting well in the second quarter. And you had mentioned they were seven for 11 in the first so that made him, what, five for 14 in the second quarter? That's only? correct. Full timeout, Marty. Full timeout with 5.09 remaining in the third. It's all tied up at 38. See Kevin Conway, helped at the JV game, assistant coach for uh, Ron Rudolph. Keith. Keith. Brother, Kevin. Hey, just one of five shooting for North in the start of the third quarter, Marty. You were right on there. Since that first quarter, that makes them six for 19. Preble, on the other hand, like you said, is red hot. And that's why we're tied. North continuing to play the 1-3-1. Good skip pass to Vandenbush. Two Raiders run at him, but he can't get it in. Three chances they had and they came out with nothing. Oh, Larson read it. Oh man, great steal by Christian Larson. 40 to 38, Preble on top. Their first lead since early in the ball game. Yeah, it was seven to two. Then it was what, 19 to seven? Something yep. like that? I looked that up for you, Chris. You're right, seven to two, and then all of a sudden it was 17 to two. Schwer missed again. They just can't find the hoop. Trouble up by two with a chance to increase on that lead. Man, they had those, what, two turnovers and a miss. They've had a lot of chances. Too easy. Larson got around free for an easy layup. He's seven of 11 tonight. Gotta find him. Larson has 15 points in the ball game. Kellner with just four points tonight. Not many attempts either. Two, four attempts. There's that back door, automatic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris. 
It was in there. <laughs> Preble uh, spreading it out here on this 1-3, trying to attack this 1-3-1 themselves. 42-40, Preble still on top. Giesler's feed to uh, Weaver, and he puts it up and in. Almost looked like he had a two-hand dribble there before he made that pass. That was his rhythm bones. Yep. 44 to 40, rolling down to the three minute mark of the third quarter. Kellner's shot from outside is no good. Didn't look like he had his feet set just right no. for that shot. He quick release that time, and I, you're right, I don't think he was all the way set. Boy, Larson. takes it hard to the basket and scores. And timeout north. I'll tell you, they look good right now. The Preble Hornets do. That's a full timeout by the Raiders with 2.43 remaining in the third quarter. There you see it, Preble on top, 46 to 40. trust. It really isn't that the case. Look at those guys. They're, they got it all figured out, the whores and boys there. Really? Dad and son. Just like we do. North needs to shoot better. Yep. Make more baskets. Eight of ten is Preble, and their only two misses were Vandenbush's two threes. And those were actually pretty good looks, too. Uh, he's 0 for 4 tonight. But I'll tell you, Larson's two for two, Punzel's two for two in the quarter. Three for three is Giesler. It's gonna have to be done on the defensive end. The offense will come, but you gotta shut them down on the other end. Schwer puts it up and in. Breaks the uh, run by uh, Preble. Here comes the North Press. 46 -40. A lot of contact by Timmy there. They got a turnover. All righty, 46-42, I think I gave you the wrong score. 2-10 remaining. Shot by Free, took it right down the lane and put it up and in. 46-44. Up to Weaver. Nice uh, pass. Yeah, I was going to say almost a little too hard, but Punzel able to handle it and put it up and in. Boy, they've been lucky. A couple of them bounces tonight, but uh, give Hornets the Hornets the credit. They've been snagging them and putting them in the hoop. Almost another pick by Weaver. Yeah, I was going to say a pretty lazy pass that time by TJ. One twenty-five remaining in the third quarter. Preble on top, 48-44. Way downtown. Away from way outside, can't get it in. Good rebound by Michael Weaver. Larson on the push, right down the lane and lays it up and in. That was way too easy. Boy, oh boy. 50-44, to 44. back up to a six point lead. Free on a lean in is no good and he gets called for the charge. It's a bad call. That was a good flop, fall down by Weaver. Here you'll see it, watch him does fall back, whoop. Good shot of coach Tom Desitel, and he definitely is concerned. Preble has come out uh, and played a very good second and third quarter so far. They're a little lethargic after a nice start, but uh, I'll tell you what, what keeps your lethargic down. Good shooting. Yeah, they, it didn't matter who was shooting in that second quarter. I mean, and they were taking jump shots, you know, and that's just carried over. Now they're just getting easy baskets. Seems like most of their baskets are in the paint, Marty, and, you know, we went from outside game to an inside game, and, uh, you know, that's what you got to do to beat North in this gym is shoot well. Tiker had the ball tipped away, but Weaver comes away with it. 
Whoa, that's the right outside. into the first roll. And that young lady down there wasn't expecting that. David Thompson, if you're gonna play outfield for me, you gotta pick that ball. <laughs> you let her take it right in the skull. There's David Thompson in the blue. He caught it like he was a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> Big win for the wrestling program, 35-34, yeah, something over South the other day. That was an upset win. David got a, a win in his match. Schwer being guarded by Weaver. Takes a long three, it's no good, and North uh, having trouble nailing the three. That one rolled right around. He hasn't made one yet. Vandenbush, no good. It's a one on four. Short. Way short. And uh, Kellner with a great effort, but he uh, got his foot on the line and was called for being out of bounds. 10.4 seconds remaining in the third, Preble on top. 50 to 44, that's been their biggest lead, six points. Boy, Tim started off five for six, but since that he's two for his last eight. Weaver shuffled the feet, that's gonna be no count, no basket. Shuffled the feet prior to the shot. There's 2.7 seconds remaining. North will have an opportunity to uh, score before the end of the quarter. Coach Desitel wants his uh, floor leader out there, puts free in there. Damian Simons coming in. Larson gonna take a little bit of a rest here. That's a good substitution and free back in. They throw it into uh, Eirich. Too easy. I can do it. Kisses it off the glass, but no good. And we're at the end of three quarters of play. Preble on top, 50 to 44. The unbearing. Oh, you look perfect. <laughs> Today, people seem to care a lot more about how good they look than how well they see. And that's a big mistake, because an eye doctor can see things you can't, like the first signs of glaucoma, diabetes, and high blood pressure. For men and women over 40, it might be wise to look into your eyes. Visit CheckYearly.com, a message from the Vision Council of America and AARP. Larson leading uh, all scorers now with 17 points. Tim Schwerer has 16. Uh, 11 point quarter for North. Preble came out and scored 20. And they lead it 50 to 44 entering the fourth quarter. Well, North's got to get back to driving to the basket. They were four of 14 shooting, but one of nine from three. That means he only took five two pointers. Got to get closer to the basket, drive, penetrate, and then get that three pointer working later on. There you go. Kellner knocks it home on a driving basket and is fouled. Hunzel commits the foul. Preble, on the other hand, in that quarter, Marty was 10 of 13. They're 18 of the last 24 in the second and third. But you gotta play four to win this game. Nice idea there by TJ getting to the basket. He has another point. Makes it 50 to 47. One possession game. Another turnover for Preble. Kellner, 16 now. Kellner has nine points in the game. Kellner open for just a second, got the shot off, but couldn't get it in, and it bounces off and out of bounds. Well, they ran the play. They got the play they wanted and the shot they wanted. They just, they're having trouble hitting threes. Three of 17 now for the Raiders from three-point line. 
Ball's gonna go on Eirich and uh, that's gonna be his third. Well, we've talked about this, Marty. Third team foul too. We don't like to see Tom get into foul trouble. Ooh. North all over the Preble Hornets and their pressure. Larson got away with the carry. Weaver, three point look, no good. Great block out by TJ Kellner. And Larson commits the foul. Get a little closer to the bonus, boys. That's the third team foul now. It's Larson's third team foul also. Preble too is cold from out there. They're just three of 11 from three point line. 7.15 remaining in the ball game. It's 50 to 47, Preble on top. Conway couldn't quite handle it, but was able to knock it off of Paul Giesler. So North will keep it. Ooh, they had the back door look though. Yep. And a bad pass, Weaver. Good quickness, took it away from Nolan Free. Giesler going hard to the hoop. Oh, couldn't get it in. Great move though by the big man for Preble. Let's see if that comes back and uh, haunts Preble. That was almost an automatic two. Danny Tyker committing the foul on Eirich. There you see it, slap down. That was uh, Tyker's first foul, but the fourth team foul on Preble. They've been pretty good from there again tonight, Marty. Well, they were six for seven in the first half, two for two in the, sec in the third quarter, and now they're two for two so far here in the fourth. Championship teams make big free throws. Bless your Memphis. Deep, good deep, oh, thought Kellner had to steal, but he couldn't get it. Tyker was able to get it back, but then he does draw the foul on TJ Kellner on the shot attempt. It's just one of those bad breaks again, Marty. It's been, seems like all the loose balls or goofy dribbles or bounces or bangs off bodies are falling into the hands of Preble. There was one that TJ had, just couldn't hold on. It's 50 to 49, Preble on top by only one. Tyker will try to make it a two point game with the second attempt. That's and why they're off. 500. Championship team makes them, 500 teams miss them. So they had a bunny layup and two free throws and now North has a chance to take the lead. Schwer eyes it up and nails it. North finally hits a three pointer. 52 to 50. It's been an eight point run here in the, to start the fourth quarter. Giesler walked. Good idea, but tightening up the uh, towel a little bit. Watch him drag the foot. Yep, he took an extra step. And we get a timeout treble, a good timeout, a 30-second timeout by Brian Gallagher trying to stem the tide. Uh, Chris, they started the quarter with a three-point play by Kellner, and so far in this quarter now, they're at a three-point basket for uh, Schwer, and then the two free throws by Eirich. Eight-point run, pretty nice start here. Yep. Preble's feeling pretty good, and all of a sudden, as I say, they're tightening the towel, and all of a sudden, you're getting a little bit nervous. And there was a turnover, a definite turnover there. I know Coach Gallagher was talking to the officials about that turnover, but. That was a good call. Yep. What they need to do now, North that is, is uh, they need to come down and score some more points. It's youth night here, I believe. Yep. For the rec departments. And we'll see one of the alumni young. band night and youth night and TV8 night. It was Chris Lenz night. That's right. Very nice interview with him. Thanks for coming on, Chris. Under six minutes left in the ball game. North up by only two. Schwer 
Takes uh, Vandenbush on the dribble and pops in another basket. Oh, he's coming back to life, Chris. Yep. Here you see. A quick foul. Watch him break down Vandenbush. It's a free throw. Twenty-one points for uh, Tim. No foul trouble for North tonight, except for Irick. He's got three, but everybody else should be in for the duration. Tyker from 10, bad miss. Geisler's shot is no good, but he's fouled. I think I said Geisler again, it's Geisler. Alex Conway picks up another quick foul, gives him three. Geisler will be shooting a couple. Tommy Olson, there you see him checking in. Right on cue, Brian. You know he's checking in? That's what good cameramen, they anticipate. Yeah, really. Fifty-four, fifty-one. Giesler trying to make it a two-point game, and he does. But uh, two and a half minutes and only two points for the, yeah. what was the Red Hot Preble Hornets. That breaks the uh, eight-point north run. Oh, nice drive by Nolan Free. I'll tell you, Weaver's done a pretty good job on him on the driving action, but uh, not that time. Nolan doing good job on uh, Christian Larson, but he continues to dribble and shoots a 10-footer and oh, got it. Oh boy, so much pressure there. Free was all over him. I thought he was a little bit out of control, but he got a nice roll. 56-54, north by two. Wooley on a nice scoop. A little pass from Schwer. The Kim, Twins. take it to the basket again. Came out on fire, I told you. He's 20, a quarter guy. 23 points. I like that four point lead as opposed to a two point lead. Puts it into a, at least a two possession game. Just under 430. Larson shot is blocked on a deep pass to Olsen. Takes it, no, he's gonna get called for the travel. Good bust out by North, but uh, Ole got to put it on the floor first. Watch it, take, take that extra step. One, two, three. It's one too many. Good block there by Tom, though. He created that opportunity. That's one way to stop Larson, block a shot. Weaver got away with a shuffle. Punzel working on Kellner, got it in. Boy, he's been a force that I don't think they expected tonight. No siree. He's five of five from the floor, four of four in the second half. Wow. Three fifty remaining. North up two. Kellner's leaning is no good. Preble all over the oh. rebound, almost lost it. And again, it goes right into their hands, Marty. Weaver. Eirik had to let him go, but couldn't make the shot. Punzel's shot is no good. And finally, he oh, missed one. Man, you talk about bad breaks. Preble had two good looks at it and couldn't get either one to go. Wow. Punzel hasn't missed anything all night, and he misses the automatic one. Conway from deep, and he got it in. Oh, man. I thought the defense was quite good on him. 61, 58 on a basket by Christian Larson. Got a step on Nolan. Nolan tried to get in there. And I thought they weren't going to call it there, but they uh, called it at the end. Nice five point lead. Yeah. Now Preble can cut it down to two. Here you'll see it. Watch Nolan. No. Yeah, got on his back a little too much. Larson yep. has 21 points. Chris, a chance to make it 22 which he does. It's 61-59, three minutes remaining in the ball game. We got a barn burner going here. Kick out to Conway. Oh, couldn't get it in. Free with the rebound, shot up no good, but he's fouled. 
Good job of keeping the ball alive. I believe that was TJ Kellner underneath Chris that uh, popped it back up. Punzel picks up his fourth. Yeah, four black shirts around there. TJ gets a paw on it. Falls into the hands of Free and back to the free throw line for North. Round and out, Eirich couldn't hang on to it. 62-59, North up three. Tell you, Preble struggled with this press. They're gonna have a turnover soon. They just seem to dribble and North's live hands are causing all times of havoc here. Don't foul, they're in the bonus. Oh, they double teamed Larson at half court and he threw the ball away, great pressure by Schwerer and Conway, and Coach Tom Desatel calls a timeout. With 2.39 remaining, let's see how they play this. Well, they're asking Coach what he wants. He wants a 30 second timeout, Chris. So we better keep it here, Scott. Uh, what do you think Coach is telling him? As, uh, get to the basket. Take care of the basketball. Get to that basket, to that free throw line. That's what we've been doing our damage. Here you see the uh, pressure here. I said you're going to get a turnover and there it was. They've really struggled against that press. You know, a couple taps here and there have fallen in there. You see Kurt Davis and the Pauls and Olsen's right there. Kurt Davis of course the goal team coach and he was also the St. Dominic's coach when he did have uh, TJ and Tim and Alex and Tom on that team as 8th graders and must be pretty proud to see uh, these kids doing so well as seniors. Free has it on top. Has a drive down the lane, but then he has to kick it back out. Good cover up defense by Preble. Kellner from the wing hits a three pointer. A big shot by TJ at 65 59. And. Wally Vandenbush loses it out of bounds. Another double team at half court, this time by Free and Conway. TJ, turnover number 19 North for with a Preble, but not, last two have been just huge. Six point lead by the Raiders, rolling down the two minutes left in the ball game. Tell you, Preble was down by three with the ball. They turned it over twice in a row now, and. Kellner threw that three in there just for a uh, little added. Uh, oh, there's your foul. One away. Foul goes on Christian Larson. That's going to be his fourth. <laughs> that changes the way he thinks about defense. They're going to get to that line, Marty. Nope, nope. No shooting that time. I nope. thought they were in the bonus. Next time. Going to get to that line. 145 left in the ball game. North up six, 65, 59. Schwer being guarded by Larson. Not by him, kick out to Eirik. <laughs> Weaver's pretty quick. <laughs> he is very quick. That one uh, just enough on the... Uh... Conway. Ooh. Little extracurricular activities. And uh, Giesler going over to talk to uh, Conway, saying nothing personal. Well, in the scouting report, that's probably the guy they said we got a foul. Well, Alex does not go to the line a lot. Correct. You know, and that might be the thinking there, but uh, it's going to be a one and one. He needs to make this one to get the next. And they picked a good choice, but Conway tracks down the rebound. That's huge. 115 remaining, North up six. You know that free throw line for Conway is a little too close. <laughs> That's not the guy you want to foul. No. Wally Vandenbush picking up the foul. TJ Kellner going to the line. Just a nine point quarter for Preble. Now, 
Norris so far in the ball game is 12 for 15 from the line. They've been uh, very good there. Preble's only got seven attempts in the whole quarter. You know, they were going 12, 11, 13, and now the game is getting away. 66 59, 103 remaining. Kellner with another one. This is one of those that tonight you're not going to sleep if you're a coach of the players. We had them, we had them, we had them. What happened? Couldn't score. Eight minutes away. Long feed to Punzel. Giesler. No way. Shot is no good. Big Three with a good rebound gets it over to Eirich and then he's fouled by Giesler. Well, turn out North, the lights. North has not hit their threes very good through uh, the second and third quarter, but when they needed a couple in the fourth, they got them, and they got three of them. One, two by, uh, pardon me, Schwer had one, Conway had one, and TJ Kellner had one, so they spread the wealth in that regard. Eirich's free throw rolls off. 67-59, North up eight, 40 seconds and counting. Weaver hard to the basket. Layup is no good. And then Giesler picks up a foul. Going after the rebound, Nolan Free will go to the line. And that'll be number four on Big Paul. Tell you, Punzel and Giesler, who are so hot in the second and third quarter, earlier in this quarter, missed a couple easy buckets. And those came back to haunt them later. And again, you're right. For North, it was those clutch threes. Three of five from three-point line after going one for their last 12 in the second and third quarter. But you're right, they spread it around. Each guy contributed with one, but each of those were huge. Now they're just doing their work at the free throw line, which they've done all season. 16 for 20. Van Bush hasn't hit one yet tonight. And Glanced one off the rim out of bounds. 0 for 6 from out there, Marty. Yeah, he's had a tough night. Well, you'd feel bad for him if you wore a white jersey. It's hard to believe it's a 10 point lead for North. Good uh, adjustment on the pass by Conway. Kellner. Had it stolen away by Larson. He pulls up from three point. Landon drains a three and a quick timeout. It's too late, Marty. Wow. Well, there's 12.1 seconds remaining. It's 69 62 north. 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it here. Chris uh, is going to go downstairs for some winning, for some interviews from the winning north team. Hopefully they can hang on for these uh, 12 seconds. They only have a seven point lead. Our next broadcast will be next Saturday night when Ash Wabanon comes back to Sheboygan to play at uh, South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse. And uh, that'll be our last regular season ball game. Anything after that will be in uh, tournament action and uh, there's discussions about uh, possibly getting some of the uh, South High girls games on. We'll just have to see about that. Of course, we always like to uh, follow teams through the tournament run. And uh, boy, we had some great games last year with North making it to the sectional finals, losing eventually to the state champions, Oshkosh West. And of course, following the North girls through sectionals all the way till they went to state. Clock running down, and that's going to be the ball game. North a winner, 69-62, in a very entertaining basketball game that uh, Preble gave the Raiders all they could handle. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, hopefully Chris Wright will have some interviews for us. The unbearing. Oh, 
You look perfect. <laughs> Today, people seem to care a lot more about how good they look than how well they see. And that's a big mistake, because an eye doctor can see things you can't, like the first signs of glaucoma, diabetes, and high blood pressure. For men and women over 40, it might be wise to look into your eyes. Visit CheckYearly.com. A message from the Vision Council of America and AARP. The dream of education beyond high school, the cost can put it out of reach. There is help. We are federal student aid, part of the U.S. Department of Education. Each year we award $80 billion to all eligible students and families. Learn more at federalstudentaid.ed.gov. Don't get left behind. The most costly education is the one not begun. Federal student aid. Start here. Go further. These days, kids are logged on or plugged in almost 24-7. Parents need to start early to help kids make good technology choices. But where do you start? Visit tunedinfamily.com. Get the tools you need to make sure they're plugged in to the values that are important to your family. Hey Kyle. What are you doing? We need to talk about your choice of games. Tunedinfamily.com. Helpful tools you can use for the good of your family. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. You can buy ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Back with uh, Tim and TJ. Tim, these guys beat you by 20 last year. Tough game up there. They weren't going to go away. Up 50 to 46 in the third quarter. These guys like this gym or like playing you guys. This is one of the toughest opponents you got. You know, the last two years. Yeah, they're they're a tough team. They're they're big. And last year they came in here and beat us by 20 points. And we knew they were going to be tough, so we had to bring our A game, and we did a pretty good job tonight. Well, leading 50 to 46, you know, coming in that or 50 to I think it was 50-44 or something like like six, and held him just to nine points there to close it out. Well, Christian Larson was tearing us apart on the on the press uh, break, but uh, we tried to double him up and make somebody else bring up the ball, and that was the key to the game right there, I think. Yeah, the one-three-one worked well, but it was a nice adjustment you guys made going to the press. You know, I thought they were a lot of out of control. They could have had a lot more turnovers, but that press did kind of uh, you know kind of squeeze them a little bit. Yeah. Well. Our defense wasn't too bad, but they were just knocking, knocking down a lot of shots. They're they're on fire. So. Yeah, I, I agree. They, you know, what happened too is they're taking shots from all over the place. They're big guys, and then in the third quarter, they're getting it inside too. It didn't matter where they put it up, but it seemed like it went in. Yeah. Hey, good quick start for you. You're someone too. I said you kind of are quiet guy. You 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 seem to go in spurts. You had a nice first quarter, and good thing you had a nice fourth quarter too. Well, they were really keying on TJ and Alex because they're such good shooters and. Just trying to take it to the middle because they're helping out so much on them and trying to kick it off to them for the shot. Well, congratulations, Tim. I got one more question for you in a minute here. Um, clinched your division tonight. I know South got a win tonight too, but you know I was saying at the opening, I guess your goal is to win the division or the conference at the beginning of the year. You know, the playoffs and stuff comes later, but that was probably your goal and you got it tonight. Yeah, I think everybody on our team, you know, had that mindset, right? You know, November 12th, whatever the date was, you know, we want to win this conference. We want to 
we're out here to prove something because you know everyone thinks that the conference is so much tougher and we can't win it. But I think we proved everyone wrong. Free throw shooting the last couple weeks have just been incredible. I mean, last week you hit, I don't know, 20 of 25. Last night you missed just three. And, you know, again, got to a close game. And, you know, they missed some, and you guys made them. And, you know, I don't know how much Coach emphasizes free throws, but I'll tell you what, you know, you guys are really clutch. Yeah, well, we work on a lot in practice. You know, I mean, shooting your uh, bonus free throws in practice followed by, you know, a two-shot foul. I mean, if you don't, if the team doesn't get the required amount of, of makes, you know, you're doing your push-ups or whatever, running lines. So I, I think it's really paying off. Well, tonight was rec night tonight. I wonder if all those younger people all heard that. See, you run when you're up in the varsity if you miss them, too. It doesn't matter what level you are. One thing I got to just comment here, too, is both you guys went to St. Dominic's and Coach Davis had you guys there. What has it been, you know, playing for four years together and you know it's what a great accomplishment from a real small school like that uh, you know to come out here and you know all these years together and look it all pays off. Well coach Davis did a really good job of coaching us in middle school I mean he's just a great coach and got us ready for high school really good. Any comments TJ? Yeah I think uh, I don't know about last year but this year it's really paying off with the chemistry you can see I mean we get a lot of backdoor passes a lot of you know just you know, uh, a little two-man game, you know, reading each other. So I think that's really paying off of playing each other for so long. Yeah, and I agree. I think that's one thing you guys do. It seems like I said it, I've been saying it over and over. You guys don't aren't a bunch of all-stars, but you seem like you know where each other are on the floor and can feed each other. It almost can, seems like you can read each other. It seems like, you know, you fake to the outside and you're right. That back door cut was working too. And, you know, you, you can just see how you guys are flowing. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, like I said, playing together for, I mean, me and Tim and Alex and Tom for – Geez, I can't even remember. And I mean, it's just stuff like that. You're just gonna, it's gonna happen. So. Well, I remember way back when when these young guys were playing there. But congratulations to both you guys and uh, finish off the season strong. I know you got a big test in a couple weeks against Bayport. Good luck with that. And then comes the tournament. With that, we'll send it back to Marty. With the win tonight, Sheboygan North now has a 15 and two record, 12 and two in conference, and the win tonight clinched the East Division title. So they are the East Division champions for the first time in the Fox River Classic Conference. Preble slips to uh, nine and eight on the season with the 69 to 62 loss to North. Leading all scorers was Christian Larson. He had 25 points. Uh, Punzel had 13, Paul Geisler had 13. Those were your double figure scorers for Preble. North was led by Tim Schwerer and uh, boy, he had a big first quarter. He had 12 points and kind of went away for the uh, middle two quarters but came back strong in the fourth quarter, finished with 23 points. Following him was Nolan Free with 16 points and T.J. Kellner with uh, 14. Alex Conway had 9. And uh, North on the night hit 16 of 20 free throws, a lot of those in the fourth quarter to uh, keep the lead. Uh, Preble gave them all he could handle. They had as much as a 7-point lead, 6-point lead, pardon me. They started the fourth quarter up 50 to 44, but uh, North was able to battle back and uh, win the game, and like, like I mentioned, it was a big win for them. Our next broadcast is going to be uh, next Saturday when Ash Wabanon comes to town over at South High's Acuity Fieldhouse. That'll be our last regular game, and then hopefully we'll have some tournament action for you after that. For the crew, Brian Andrews on the floor camera, Eric Wiesman on uh, the up camera, the one you're looking through right now, Scott Miloff, excellent job in the truck spinning the dials and getting those replays to us. For my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody. One more time, North of Winter, 69-62. We'll see you down the road.